Hey, hello out there. This is a Bitcoin slash real estate uh, thing. So if that's not your thing right now, if you're just focused on real estate, because this is in the Facebook group as well as on my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is fine with it, but I know the Facebook group can really just be focused on the real estate. But if you are, just have some insights on the current Bitcoin rush, what to do with it, why you should never sell your Bitcoin, and how it can be the same as real estate when it comes to having a valuable asset and learning how to use it and manipulate it for what you want, right? So I'm going to start with like if you haven't being, being if you haven't known right now, but Bitcoin has gone through a big rush. Now this is not a fake rush. And it never is. Um, this isn't a fake gold rush. This isn't, the last time was a little bit overinflated, but this one has been consistent. So for the last few years, I've been buying anywhere from two to $400 worth of Bitcoin every single month on all, um, autopilot. You would call that in the stock world dollar cost averaging, where you're not timing the market, you're just buying a set sum every day, and it's going to average out over time, right? And so, it's like, oh, should I wait? Should I pull back? No, you're just buying and it'll work itself out. So Bitcoin has made this huge rush. So I have like one Bitcoin, <laughs> just one. And I only have one because I had half a Bitcoin doing the dollar cost averaging. And then about a year ago, it pulled back from 10,000 to like 3,500. And I went and bought the other half of the Bitcoin. So that's the only reason I have it. And so, and of course the altcoins too, I'd buy like $50 versus Ether. I'd buy $50 versus Litecoin. I like Litecoin because South Korea loves Litecoin and it is a lightning network. Um, I like Ether because Letha has a lot of smart contracts. And so I'm just gonna say off the bat, I knew cryptocurrency was going to be a big deal because of all the sci-fi novels I read. And if you read sci-fi novels or fantasy novels and you think they're fake, that's fine, but they're not. So every sci-fi novels had like Bitcoin and crypto. And then I was like, it just makes sense. And so when it, it was introduced here in our three, in you know, in this world, I'm like, yeah, man, I've been reading about this for 10, 15 years. So that's sort of why I sort of knew this was the future because it just made sense, not only in this fictional reading material that I'm reading that has a consistency throughout the whole uh, diaspora or the whole genre, but also it just makes sense if you're someone who's like me, which is independent, want to own their own wealth, do not want to be beholden to any institution. So that is why I personally sort of knew Bitcoin was the future and was okay doing two to $400 worth of it. So I've been talking about this like every six months in this group. If you have purchased Bitcoin, go ahead and post if you had, how you're doing it. So mine was just $200 when it pulls back. I would buy more, but I just believed it was the future. So where are we now? So I'm in this group, it's called Black People in Cryptocurrency, it's on Facebook. I highly recommend it um, if you are a black investor because they have so many other spaces for other people. This is specifically for us to share what we want. I really like the space. We have a lot of thought leaders. We have people who are doing their own cryptocurrencies in there. We have people who are doing seminars, who are doing webinars, who are doing conferences. You know, so it's a really good group. So Black People in Cryptocurrency, you can look for that on Facebook. I would recommend you joining it. Yes, you have to be black because there are necessary black spaces that are needed that are secure and safe and we just don't have to have the added stress or anxiety of someone who does not know um, what we're coming from with the generational wealth gap and the other things that we have against us. And just trying to explain it is exhausting and um, you know, we're done with being exhausted. So we have these spaces. So I would recommend it. So if you have it, go ahead and let me know if you have the Bitcoin. So it's funny, be and the reason I'm doing this is because we're going to use Bitcoin like it's an asset. And I wanna show talk about that because we had to learn real estate the hard way about selling assets versus tapping into the equity. So if you've been paying attention, this Bitcoin that started at $100 in 2012 or 2013 or 2014, right? rose to about two, 3,000, then rose to 10,000, and then it had this huge rise, like 20, that it went back down to like five, 6,000, right? So that's what we've been dealing with. And I would say that the first rise was, um, you know, it just got mainstream really quick. And then all this new money, not just the diehard people who are following and really believed in it and was making it, got into it. So you have that much of global money going to anything, it's gonna cause this huge market. And then banks got into it too at that time. And even though they're all dissing the banks, they're all like right now, they want to um, 
they're all dissing it, but then at the same time, they're sitting there buying it up and making their own blockchains and their own contracts to deal with the system. Because at the end of the day, it's not just me and the sci-fi crowd who's like, yeah, this makes sense. It's the future. I can I can invest in this. This seems like it makes sense. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, they're doing it the same thing, too. So we just had a rise now. Uh, Monica says Robinhood platform is free. You can buy and join Robinhood. Okay. Oh, uh, you know. Do your little plug and get your little affiliate income, Monica. Um, so, yes, um, all of a sudden, this time around, after that huge rise and it got global attention, what has happened since then is it's at 32,000 last time I checked. It might be even higher. But I want to talk about what happened since then. So if you guys were wondering what was going on, why you would even think that this is sustainable. Since that global appearance you got to remember when bitcoin was got really popular on that huge run up um, at 20k at that time it had a steady market it had people who just believed in bitcoin and was mining and holding it because they believed in the financial freedom and decentralization it's called yeah um decentralized finance and that's what we're going to talk about right finance right real estate money equity right so we're going to talk about that because that's what's been developed too so you had core people holding its value the core people was a global audience of miners and people who believed in each individual project plus the in general and cryptocurrency they must have read the same sci-fi novels as me i don't know so you had that you also had and i and i don't i don't say this like it's good i just say it like it's a fact so i'm not endorsing this so you also had like nefarious people in crypto which held its value so there were countries like Iran and Venezuela who had embargoes and who had sanctions who would use cryptocurrency as a way of buying, passing things, not using the U.S. dollars, but still getting value to the people who needed it to buy things that they couldn't buy technically because of their sanctions. So you have places like that that used it. I even think Zimbabwe was looking into it as well, right? You even have freaking Akon making a whole billion dollar and that's going through and they're breaking ground you know city and Senegal based off of it you have governments in India who are trying to completely go into the cryptocurrency so I want you to know since that run-up I mean it always had value for um, states that had sanctions it had values for drug dealers um, that into drugs if you are whatever that's your battle and <laughs> it's your battle you gotta fight for the next 30 years right but the thing is regardless it held value because those people were always going to be involved right it was a silk road it was the drug trade it was bitcoin was how they do it very nefarious people do it so i'm not saying it's good that there's nefarious things you know, because, I mean, it gets a little dark with, like, the whole, you know, kidnapping and sex trafficking. Like, that's not cool, right? Like, no one wants that to happen. Um, but the reality is there were millions and billions of dollars that were in it that sort of held the value. And so I'm not saying that cryptocurrency was great. I'm just saying there was always a core value because it was very usable to people who wanted to be outside the system and states and you know sanctions countries right so there was always a value so you're like oh does it hold any value yes to the people who are using it to get cash to other places very quickly without going to the banks some of it nefarious and some of it just like people like me i just like being free and not controlled right like it's just some of us are just like that and i'm gonna be programmed like that to be forever like that and i'm gonna always do things that are gonna go outside the system to make sure i'm not dependent on it so i have freedom right um thank you tim and so that is what ha so that was it always held a value because of those people but since then the banks are making their own smart contracts the banks have been buying cryptocurrency saudi princes i read about this about six months ago because you know i just read articles as they come up so you're just keeping track of it saudi princes were quietly going around buying as much crypto as they can from all the whales okay since then because they're like i want a piece of this since then, you have like Grayscale is an ETF and, and they're buying up all the Bitcoin they literally can find. And so you have something that's a finite resources that always has a core audience of crime and crime rings, also has a core audience that will always buy. So if everyone sold, you have a whole dedicated global audience who will buy because they believe in the actual, like what it can be. And you're always gonna have that core. So what you have is limited supply and people who have it who have value in it because it can be exchanged for money 
the more limited the supply, whatever. So you knew this was going to happen. All of a sudden, three months ago, PayPal, Robinhood, Coinbase, and Cash App made it so you can buy Bitcoin directly from your app, right? So all of a sudden, all the banks got in, Saudi princes were buying, Russian oligarchs were buying, different um, uh, financial institutions were buying all the Bitcoin that was left over that they can. That gives it the store to value as well as its utility and bypassing the banking system, depending on who you are. So if you're like, it has no value, well, like there's baseball cards being sold for thousands, millions of dollars. Why? Because you know what I mean? It's a supply. People will always hold it valuable. And in this way, it's actually quite usable. So I just want to say if anyone who's like, why do you think it has value, whatever, there's going to be people who use it, who always use it because they can't use cash. It's the easiest thing to use. So it's always going to have a value as long as they can exchange it for cash dollars, right? Oh, thank you, David. <laughs> so, um, so that is why if you're wondering, and that's just me talking, of course you can get really detailed, but I just sort of talk, you know, big picture, that's enough for something to hold value right so that is what's going on all of a sudden paypal robinhood cash app you can buy it directly and i buy it from those i buy it from coinbase i buy it from cash app i just do like on um, coinbase is like where i do the 200 to 400 dollars a month and i've been doing it for three to four um last three four years but um you know you have uh cash app now and paypal as soon as they said cash app paypal and robin hood was going to make it easy to buy crypto currency you should have known with their huge global audiences that this was going to cause a rush on Bitcoin. It was going to call people to buy. And since that time, there's smart contracts. And since that time, and this is where it relates to real estate investing, we have what they call DeFi. DeFi is decentralized financing, okay? They call it DeFi for short. It's very San Francisco, which is like, um, so yeah, DeFi, that's what they call it for short. So decentralized financing, what can you do with decentralized financing? They have cryptocurrencies that, um, and we're gonna talk about, you can loan and lend against, you can make passive income against, you can stick it against it, you can, um, so you get loans, you can get credit, you can get, so everything a bank can do, mortgages, escrow, okay? So it's a decentralized escrow, meaning like, hey, if you want money, you know, that usually goes into an escrow and cannot be released until X date or X time. They literally have all these different cryptocurrencies that are creating that technology where you run on that platform where you can do that and people are starting to, of course, use it, right? You know, trying to go to, so um, right now there's a huge run up on Bitcoin. So Bitcoin that was worth $9,000 to me is now worth $32,000. It's like $22,000, $23,000 in equity. And it's going to continue rising because it's still a finite resources. And now you have a much bigger pool of people who want the finite resources, right? And like I said, even if they all disappear, there's still that core group who will buy it all up. So it's always going to have value. So you have this run up and it's funny because I had to go to the black people in cryptocurrency group because just like real estate, there were so many people in the black community in New York and all over with gentrification where they were offered a large sum of money for what was, you know, for a house they might've bought for $60,000 in the eighties or seventies. All of a sudden they're getting offered $300,000 and they're like, yeah, get my money and they sold the house. But then you see the same house five years later being sold for 700, 800, $900,000. And the knowledge that we did not have in our community that other communities did have and they were sort of preying on us for was the fact that you don't sell, you tap into equity, right? So I'm in my Black People of Cryptocurrency group and I'm like, don't sell, tap into the equity. And how can you do that? So if I wanted to take the $23,000, I can go to one of the decentralized financing arms, which is DeFi, one of the DeFi um, apps that are available. And I can go ahead and... Um, you can put your your you can get up to about anywhere from 30 to 50 percent of the value of your bitcoin at any one time you can get money and tap into the equity because you can lend it to someone else so um you can lend against your bitcoin or you can put it up as collateral and get the money from someone else who's willing to give it up for you so that's part of the DeFi network so there is BlockFi. So Block Finance, BlockFi, and Celsius are two of the more stable networks that haven't been hacked. 
and are um, a little bit more robust and more popular. And sometimes with popularity, you get more stability, you get more people in the system and playing the game, right? So, so, and I say this because, so my advice to everyone, and I'm always saying this, and I want you guys to tell your family members this, you know, when you get a property, we do not sell, we tap into equity. You need money, the house has value, you do not sell, you tap into equity. And that's how you ride it, not for when it goes to 300,000 or 700,000 or a million, you write it all the way to the top. And it's just something that we just didn't know. Same with cryptocurrency. So, so we were talking in the group and someone was like, yeah, I sold some of my Bitcoin. I'm like, no, now is not the time to sell your Bitcoin. <laughs> I know you needed the money, right? So we need to know how to tap into the equity without selling because you don't get that money back at the same value. If you buy Bitcoin now with more of a global market, you're never going to buy it for what you bought it for, right? It's always going to be more expensive, okay? So um, learning how to use these, and these are good networks too if you just want to um, loan out money and then you use their um, Bitcoin as collateral so you know, you're never going to be under. It's also good for passive income and just making money just like it is in the space. And, and just like in the other spaces where you can do like small level lending. I would just say start small and get involved just like me. I mean, I started with $200, $400 a month. If there is a pullback, I did buy, right? Now, if there's a pullback, there's, I mean, there's no way I'm going to buy like $15,000, right? Like now we're just on the fractional reserve system because, you know, at some point my $200 a month is like what? Like 1% of what the value is. Right, but I'm still buying the two to four hundred dollars, and I suggest you guys, if you can, even if you can do on the different apps, you can do five dollars, you know, you can do six, you know, ten dollars, you can do twenty dollars a month or a week. Like, you guys are in this group, if you're following me, you have twenty five dollars a month. You do, I know you do, and I would start now. And the only other altcoins that I would really take seriously is Bitcoin, um, Ether, Litecoin. And then when you get outside of that, then it's maybe a dollar for the other ones, right? So just consider that when you're going forward, unless you've done your research. And even if you've done your research, this is a long-term thing. It's like when you built the railroads, you know, like it just takes time, right? To build the railroads, but you know the railroads are a good thing and they're gonna connect people. And wow, I can see the future with it, but it took time to build, right? That's where like the first black union came out of was like black workers on the railroad, which is pretty cool. And so uh, well, the whole idea of unions came out of that. So, you know, we created that concept for, for the country. Um, and so, um, yes, so I, they were, we were talking, they were like, well, I had to sell to get the money. And I was like, no, so you can do that, lend it, get the money. And just like in real estate, do not sell, tap into the equity if you can, especially if it's appreciating at a fast rate. Because just because you've experienced 50% appreciation, wouldn't you love to experience real wealth in 100% appreciation or 200%? Because instead of selling it, you tapped into the equity. Just like with Bitcoin at this point, if you have any, do not sell it. Now is only a time to lend against it and decentralized finance. And anyways, it's good for you to learn these skills because um, I know you guys might think I'm crazy from like, read. I read, sci I read sci-fi, romance. Uh, fantasy. I read. I read all like genres, like crime. You know, <laughs> Michael Crichton. Like I read it all. But it's it's funny that you guys might you guys might think it's funny that I read these science fiction novels and they all have some sort of cryptocurrency because that's how it works. Because how else are you gonna be able to navigate? And it was just basically like the cryptocurrency we have here. They were talking about how it goes up or down and lose value. You might think it's crazy, but like I just always knew this is the future. So I've been going in on it. So my portfolio was at like, I don't know, 13 and I was at like 53. Now, knowing that it's variable and it can go up and down, I'm not like getting excited like it'll stay there. Now, do I feel like with the global awareness of it and the global use of it and how it's gotten to so many different hands, I actually think it's going to stay and just get bigger as long as people can buy $5 off these different apps and it's introduced in the face of this uh, cash app, okay? That is literally why I bought, um, Cash App is owned by Square. That's literally why I bought Square and PayPal um, uh, a stock as soon as I heard that they were going to be into the Bit Bitcoin and crypto world and make it accessible to everyone. So that's basically it. I'll take any questions if you have, but it's like, don't sell, just lend, make some money. 
So you can put your crypto up for as collateral as long as you make the payment. So Coinbase does it. They charge 6%. And Coinbase does it where, like, if you miss a payment, they take it out your crypto, which you don't want to do. So pay the cash because whatever crypto they take is worth way more than whatever cash payment you would have made. And I don't want anyone touching my crypto, but I also want to educate people about not selling anymore. We're keeping assets. We just need to remember that. We keep assets now. We do not sell assets. I don't care if it appreciated 120 or this is 400% from 10,000 to, you know, 32,000, what is that, 2,000%? Whatever, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so um, it doesn't, uh, it, it it does not matter. We just need to understand that we need to keep our assets now, especially in our community, because that's just not something we did know or, you know, understand. And I, like I said, people really took advantage of that and took advantage of us. And we're not doing that anymore. So that's just what I wanted to say. And if I wanted to, I can take this now. I was 10. Now it's 32. I can take 20K out or I think you can only loan up to 15. So even if I took 15K out, that's a property. That's a rental property that can pay that back, right? So you can tap into the equity. Um, so you didn't sell, because you don't want them taking your crypto, because it's gonna be way more expensive buying it later. You can use that money to pay for real estate. So if you haven't gotten involved, I would suggest it. Like, I mean, you don't have to believe it's the future, but you know, I'm just gonna say there's some things that you can see. Like, you know, me having an online business, I was like, well, it's sort of obvious that all the money's going online. Having an online business is done. Like, you can see the benefits, so just like with this, with crypto, I, you can see the benefits and it's just going to get bigger. Like get in the game even just a little bit until you understand more. But sometimes it's okay to be like $25 a month until I don't really have time to go into it. But they say it's the future. That's okay. Let me invest in this and I'll slowly learn over time. But at least you're gaining some stakes. So I'll take any questions. Um... um that you might have. I'm on my phone for Tony says, what do you mean by write it all the way to the top? Is it good to buy Bitcoin now? Yes, go ahead and buy it. I mean, because at the end of the day, it's the future and do you want a part of it? It's just like, it's just like when the beginning of the internet, right? Should I, should I get a website now and start learning about having an online business and a website? And there's a lot of businesses that would have, that during this pandemic you saw there are businesses who were online and brick and mortar, and there were businesses that were just brick and mortar. The ones who made the moves to make sure they had an online presence were able to withstand this economic turmoil, navigate with it, and be flexible because they were they they had that other avenue, right? And so with the monetary system, this fake coin shortage, right? People think they're trying to like the the with this pandemic and what's been going on with the economy that collapse was available. Absolutely, like putting just a little bit into it, just just because it's the future even if it's just 20 you know and i i would recommend that it's just like if i don't know in the stock market but they say just put 50 dollars in in a mutual fund that does work right i don't know everything about every stock in that mutual fund but isn't it solid advice knowing that it is a big industry it is growing it is the future that is a big part of it you getting just a piece even if it's 25 dollars and so like i said i do two to four hundred dollars and honestly I, i've actually been increasing it to like now because i buy altcoins now but still, um, you know, you know what I mean. Like, like even just those little sums, if that's all you can do in your comfort level, I would absolutely recommend it, one hundred percent. Because just like in the internet space, those who got in got in. Now, of course, some people got on the internet early, but I came a little later, right? Like in twenty thirteen is when I really got online, right? And everybody was online since two thousand. So I look at them, I was like, dang, I wish I would have gotten online in two thousand. My SEO would have been great. You know what I mean? Like you wish you would have done that, but that still doesn't mean that you can't still be successful if you got in at 2013. So just like with Bitcoin, yes, it had this run and people are getting used to it. Yes, it's okay to get in now. It is the future. So when I mean write it to the top, meaning, okay, so you're like, oh my gosh, I bought Bitcoin at 3,000, it's 33,000. Let me sell it right now and um, take the $30,000 that I, that I profited, right? No, but what if Bitcoin's 100000 right? If you needed that money, you can put it up as collateral at BlockFi or Celsius, get the money you need, pay it back, and you still have your valuable coin because you're never going to buy it back for what you paid for, right? So that's what I mean, write it to the top, Tony. Let me go through the other questions. Bring them on camera. Oh, no, no. Uh, Ebony says, Bitcoin is going to hit 100K by the end of this year. 
Girl, it's global now. It's global and since that last run up, there are so many different applications and people are using them. It's not like, oh no, like no, people who want to be outside the banking system, people who can't use the banking system, because I they don't need to check my credit for me to put my crypto up. Okay? They don't need to check and see if I was late. <laughs> right? So if you've been buying, and if you're in that black people in cryptocurrency group, they've all been buying. All right. So <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, they don't need to check your credit. Um, there's no racial, dis well, there's going to be discrimination. There's a wealth gap. But there's no, like, person on the end who's going to say yes to this loan to a white person, but not to a black person, because that is proven that that happens. So you can disregard all of that. Um, there, yeah, there's just so many different things. Now, of course, there's caution to be taken, because, like, right now, hackers are trying to get into every cryptocurrency company that they can right so of course that there is the opportunity that that could happen because it, it is a target there's so much money um uh to be made so just make sure you diversify it and you never put up more than you um, are willing to to handle um but can it be 100k with this global awareness going on with the instability of the dollar and the global community and what lockdowns and eight sixty percent of small businesses are now closed but six small businesses employ you know, the majority of peat workers in, in the world, right? You know what I mean? In each country, the small businesses are what employ the majority of people, right? And those are shutting down because of the pandemic and we don't know what's to come. So absolutely diversifying into this fund, you know, I do, like I said, now I'm like, like 600 a month, do what you need to do. This is a long-term play, not a short-term, just like stocks is long-term, not short-term. Although you can winners. Um, in the black people in cryptocurrency, there are some trend traders and they just do day trades and they make money. So you can do that if you, uh, I say just like with the internet, take the time to learn. It is the future. Either learn it or be left behind, right? And anyways, we always need to be expanding our minds. We expand our minds in one thing, it helps in another. Just like I relate it, like in real estate, I'm always telling people don't sell the house, tap into the equity. Same thing was able to apply and I could advise for use it as collateral but do not sell that bitcoin we're not doing that anymore um tony i said bitcoin i like ether because there's so many contracts and networks and systems being built around it and i like litecoin litecoin is always something really big in like um korea they like like litecoin was their thing and i'm like if you have a whole country that likes this one coin that's enough for me <laughs> right um is Dogecoin the same as Bitcoin? No, it's something that they use in like the um, in a world to like give gifts and stuff. Um, I know it's in a, a trend trade right now, meaning it's a lot of people are like, oh, Dogecoin, Dogecoin, and a lot of money's going into it. But it it doesn't really have value like other things that are like, hey, we are the cryptocurrency you use if you use our Celsius network, right? If you use our Celsius network, you can use this. But we also have lending that it, like it's not something that comes with a valuable service, so. Um, keep that in mind but the day traders in the group are trading it because people are talking about dogecoin and they know just because of all of the it goes so fast they can literally buy now and sell later and make you know thousands of dollars so it is definitely for a, a, any trend or anything that's big but has no value there is the possibility to day trade I don't got time for that so I don't do it it is a meme coin what's the best platform to purchase ETH oh that's such a good one okay now, I get a little pooped on in my, my cryptocurrency group because I use Coinbase. <laughs> so, Binance, Coinbase. Um, you'll have to look because not every market does it. Um, um, but I just, Things move fast. So Binance and Coinbase. Um, Binance was like in eight, like China, but they moved out to like Taiwan or some, or Hong Kong. It was one of those two because China was like giving them all these restrictions and they knew if they stayed, this billion dollar company would like, you know, China might try to nationalize it. Because I just heard something that China's trying to nationalize Alibaba. So Binance is good. It's Asian ran, but it it seems to me pretty legit. Um, I've had it this whole time since 2017. So, um, oh, thank you, Refin. <laughs> You can just get your coins at any exchange, Coinbase or Binance. Yeah. Um, move your coins from the exchange to an offline wallet by Nano Ledger. If you don't have your keys, you don't have your crypto. So some people recommend moving it to your own wallet because if it is on Coinbase and Coinbase gets hacked, well, what are you going to do? 
Now, I think the reason I like Coinbase, so even though they poo-poo on me because they take so many fees, Coinbase does, I think... I think you want to look into it. I think I remember reading why I went to it at the time was that Coinbase is sort of like an FDIC insured institution. Let me just look real quick. Real quick. Let's see. That's what I remember. But this was like three years ago. And I thought I remember because they have Know Your Customer and they have all the. Um... Yeah. FDIC insurance coverage is contingent upon Coinbase maintaining accurate records and determinations of the FDIC. Um, prioritizes the secure, I think, yeah, so it is, mm -mm 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 -mm. oh, like, oh, okay, any breach of the physical security, so they do have something like if their servers, like, burn up, but if it's, um, Okay, they have a little security, not much. I got to read much into it. So I do, I do use Coinbase because it just seemed like they had a little bit more. They more they were more like the banks and they went through, you had to do know your own customer. They really followed like all the rules for the banking regulations in order to come on board. And so that's their thing. Like, look, you have to give us your ID, who you are. We have to vet you. But then again, you have a little bit more insurances than you do for like the freer platforms that don't require that. And so that's why I use it. But there's other exchanges out there. You know, start with Coinbase, but then when you graduate, you go to the others, right? So Misty Blue says, Misty, aren't you in the Black People and Christy cur Cryptocurrency Group? So Ethereum is a cryptocurrency, same as Bitcoin. Does ETH also have stock available? Um, you call them coins, not stock. Um, and yes, and it is. It's um, Bitcoin was like the gold standard. It created the blockchain whole concept, and everything just models that. ETH is really good because they have smart contracts, which means it has the ability to have some logic built in. Um, and and uh, agreements and authorization. They have a lot of different tokens based off ETH, meaning they looked at the ETH blockchain and the ETH network and they made their own tokens based off that to interact with it. So it has its own ecosystem. So it is doing something substantial. Adrian Sedilia Brown said, do you connect your bank account to Coinbase or credit debit card? I have my bank account. I also, I buy crypto with my solo 401k, which I recommend for everyone who has a business. Get a solo 401k, right? Um, because you can invest in crypto with it. Um, Freddie P says, where's the black crypt people crypto group you're speaking of? You can put that in Facebook and search it. Literally what you wrote, black people crypto group, and you'll find it. Um, they'll come right up. I like it. Yes, yeah, I thought you were Misty. <laughs> I recognize you from the group. Misty Blue is a very distinct name. Yeah, so they're killing it. So I'm gonna get off right now. I just wanted to, does YouTube have any comments? Did it, does this, is this even streaming to YouTube? This streaming software, I'm telling you guys. So um, yeah, don't sell it. Just like with real estate, don't sell, tap into equity. You know, everything's good if we do that. And any questions on the YouTube platform? Oh, you know, it's not even streaming. All right, I will upload this later. All right, guys. Um, Misty, before I leave, says, I saw a stock ticker for ETH, and it seemed relative to Ethereum, so I was confused. Thank you. Huh. You got to check and make sure it just doesn't have the same um, initials as this cryptocurrency. <laughs> but generally, there's no stock. Okay. Okay. All right, guys, um, hope that was helpful. Hope that was informative. Um, but like I said, it's sort of like the internet. Like, look at us now. Everyone has an online business, right? So digital currency is the same. Is it too late? No. Get on in on it. Get in, you know. Um, should it be $400 a month or $200 a month? I think if you, just like stocks, if you can afford it, I, I, I think yes. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I mean? You really want to get in on this. It's not going anywhere. And you know, like I said, with everything going on with the pandemic, it, you know, it's just a good thing to diversify. So I'm going to let you guys go. I hope this is helpful. Have a wonderful evening and I hope you guys are enjoying everything. Um, so yeah, um, I don't even want to plug anything. Yeah, so um, I have a monthly membership if you guys are interested in it. It's called Invest in Made Easy Monthly. You can always check it out on my Thinkific page. And um, it's been really helpful for a lot of people, especially if like you're 
your you know 12 months from now is when you want to invest it's like a good thing to go through to give you all like the business of it and building the business so when you are ready you're ready to go and you know why you're in certain structures and how to protect yourself um Sonia, um, if you're new, I would say get Bitcoin, not Bitcoin Cash. If you have taken the time to research and go into it, why you think it's a good altcoin to diversify into, sure get some. But I know in my groups, no one's really talking about Bitcoin Cash, but Bitcoin is good enough. Um, and be, when Bitcoin rises, the other altcoin rises. So you would do really well with like um, Ether and Litecoin. So it, it's always followed. They are tied to each other. So, um, so it, yeah. So really like getting into altcoins is your, uh, your level of research, right? But I've just, I don't think I have any Bitcoin cash. Like I just never seen <laughs> any reason to. Now I keep my ear to the grindstone and I'm on the Reddit. So if I read something, and I hear something, I will buy it and I'll let you guys know. But up until now, I really haven't. It's been very quiet. Um, and maybe sometimes those are the ones you want, the quiet ones. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. Good night.